So Scott Kimball was, is a sociopath who is incredibly manipulative and very, very smart and very, very dangerous and looks like the guy next door, not somebody you would ever look at and think, I should be afraid of this person. And that's what I think he used to uh, commit his crimes. The investigation started off with the insurance fraud and the Cleve Armstrong theft case. How soon into it did you start um, looking at him for other reasons, and perhaps more nefarious reasons? I think it was pretty quick because as they were beginning to investigate, it was uh, it came to Gary Thatcher's attention that um, he there were all these missing people around him, um, and he was purporting to have information, for example, about the assistant U.S. attorney in Seattle that was murdered, and we um, knew that he had been in that region, and uh, so it just I mean. As we discovered each additional person that was surrounding him, it, it just became, it couldn't be a coincidence. It was, there were too many people that he was the last person to be known to be with. And plus, we had the backdrop of what he had um, allegedly done to his son. He had his sons out on this property in Adams County that he sent one of the sons inside, ordered him to go inside, ordered the other son to bend down and begin digging a hole with a spoon in the ground. And then this cattle grate that had been leaning up against a truck or automobile for a very long period of time fell on top of him. He then says that because he'd previously had a fire out on the property and he knew it took about 30 minutes for emergency vehicles to respond out there, that he put him in the car and rushed him to a vista and then on the way to a vista the car door came open I think because of the sun flailing around in the car and he fell out of the car and, and Scott was trying to grab him from falling out of the car. The son sustained very severe neurological damage although I think today he's good. Um, but in any event the reason why that's important is because the doctors said that they didn't think he could have valid memories. But what I understand is that even recently he was saying things like, why did daddy try and kill me? Why did daddy push me out of the car? Why did Scott Kimball kill those four people? I think he killed each one of them for different reasons. He killed Uncle Terry because he had money that he wanted and they had been engaged in criminal activity together that um, he didn't want there to be a witness to, I think. Um, but clearly he did it for the money on Terry Kimball. On Jennifer Markham, I'm certain it was sexually motivated. And certain why, I don't know. I just know that Scott, um, you know, I know she was a very attractive woman. I know, um, you know, her business was highly sexual. With Leah and Emery, I don't know what the motivation was um, for killing her. I know she was naked when she was killed um, because we found no clothes or trace of evidence of clothes amongst her skeleton. Mm -hmm. um, they had been involved in some criminal activity together, although she'd not been a criminal before hooking up with Scott. Um, so, you know, I think it was probably the thrill of the kill for him on, on Leanne Emery. And then um, with Casey, I'm sure it was probably sexual as well. She didn't have any money or any reason. She hadn't been engaged in criminal activity with him. So I think it was sexual. He never wanted to take full responsibility, never took full responsibility for his crimes. Did you ever see any other emotions develop in him as perhaps he realized he was getting boxed in? Mm -mm. Any signs of sorrow? Any crying? Absolutely not. Never broke down and finally said, ah, I, I can't do this anymore? No. How would you describe it? That he kept, he sort of kept up appearances right to the 
He still is. I mean, he still was with Ed Coet reading that statement saying it was part of a bigger ring and all these people were involved in the criminal activity. And, you know, I'm sure you saw Lori McLeod's response to that. Yeah. No, he's still defiant. And I have to say we still expect more to come from him. I mean, he's not going to go sit for 70 years without another peep from him. We and expect more to come from him. Uh, can you elaborate on that, Amy? There are other bodies. I can lead you to Jennifer Markham. Those are the two things that I would expect. And I have just never had the experience to interact on a variety of different levels with the complexity of the evidence, the complexity of the jurisdictional issues, um, and we sat in the conference room meeting after meeting after meeting, you know, first saying, could we just return these girls' bodies to the families? Could we at least just do that? And then could we possibly get a conviction? Could we possibly do that? And now we have two second-degree murder convictions and we have him locked up for 70 years. And so it's just been tremendously satisfying vindicating and incredibly interesting and I don't think I'll ever see anything like that again.